beautiful thing in the world because with hope, you, anything can happen. Um, hope to me means finding something to inspire you to keep going. Faith in something that things can get better and not giving up. You keep going. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we all find uh, solutions. Interesting. We talk about Gil Beth and her family and hope, and I will say they are an inspiration. And I hope that you get to know them because. I've been inspired through meeting them. When we first got uh, introduced, I realized that Gilbreth was, she's a very talented person. She has this amazing YouTube video, and she has got a great voice, she has great music. She actually wrote her own song. And then when I saw her home, and her brothers and her dad were carrying upstairs, and you know, there's a, there's a fear when you're being carried like, like a fireman would carry you down the stairs, up the stairs. I can only imagine how that, I mean, that's not a healthy fear. It's not a fun ride. Uh, and she's doing that every day. So as a part of the Home Builders Foundation, as we worked with her, it was so much fun to see her her life as, uh, you know, as a, this young woman that's, that's, she is learning her own independence. She's also able to have independence in her own home and with an accessible bathroom with a stair lift. So um, my name is Gilbeth and I'm 20 years old. Um, I was born in uh, California and um, at the age of two they diagnosed me with a spinal muscular atrophy type 3. And um, before they diagnosed me, my mom started to notice a couple of uh, symptoms, you know, that weren't like, they were kind of like, like she started to notice uh, some symptoms on me that didn't make quite sense, you know, because she was worried she always keep, keep, kept an eye on me. Everything she noticed, I never crawl. She noticed that whenever I would walk, my knees would bend easily and I would fall forward and everything. And so she started to notice those things and she would take me to, to my doctor and her doctor said, no, it's probably just, she's kind of spoiled or, you know, how babies are or things like that. So they never really gave her a straight answer. Um, and then finally one doctor, um, she noticed how my mom was very um, worried about what was going on. So she took an interest and she paid attention to my mom and she said, let me see her walk, you know. And so they, she saw me walk and she immediately noticed right away something was wrong. Well, I, I, for, I would, the first thing I would have to say that gives me um, hope is my faith. And the reason why that gives me hope is because I think uh, for us uh, humans, each one of us should have like, faith in something that's out of this realm, you know, like uh, something that's bigger than us. And I consider that it gives me hope is my family, because having them around me is, it makes me happy. And when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling sad, or when I'm feeling frustrated or everything, someone, one of them always comes in and, into, either knocks on my door or either comes to me and they, Notice when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling happy, or when I'm feeling down. Um, I consider music being uh, really uh, special because it's it just you know music. You, every I think everybody likes music. You know, there's not nobody that likes it. They might like different genres of music, but they or different, you know, different types of music, but they, everybody likes music. It like brings joy to your life. Uh, my name is Adriana, and um, I'm her mom, uh, Gilbert's mom. Hope for me, it's waiting for the time you expecting. Probably sometimes it's hard to expecting, but it's more than the um, exciting when you have the hope realized in your life. This is what happened to us. 
Una de las eh, mayores cosas que a mí me preocupa es la, el tener la esperanza de que mi hija pueda valerse por sí misma sin incluirme a mí. La estoy preparando. Eh, yo siento que la motivación más fuerte para mí es ella y yo necesito que ella sepa que yo espero que ella esté preparada para el futuro sin mí. La preparo no para ser una muchacha independiente que pueda hacer con su vida lo que ella quiera, aunque es su derecho, no es a lo que me refiero. Lo que me refiero es que ella tenga sus valores bien puestos como persona, con la madurez que sepa manejarla en su vida y a través de cada etapa de su, de su edad y que pueda ella pedir lo que ella necesita. Hablar porque ella tiene voz, sin, sin necesitarme a mí. Porque yo un día no voy a estar, y yo voy a llorar. Emocionalmente, no me va a tener toda la vida, pero yo la necesito a ella. Que esté fuerte y que se mantenga con la esperanza de que ella no, nadie la va a hacer a un lado. Ella va a tener la fuerza para decir lo que ella necesita. Esa es mi esperanza. That's my hope. Esa es mi esperanza. Que ella pueda valerse por sí misma como un ser independiente con madurez y pueda ser responsable de lo que ella necesita sola. Ese es mío. Um, you know, our customers mean a lot to me. You know, that's why I am in this industry and that's why I like this job and like this career because You know, seeing people actually be able to be independent and do things for themselves, um, getting them up and down, getting them to the bathroom, getting them to the shower, getting them to do things, you know, you see that light that comes on in them and, you know, it, you, you don't get that from anything else. I go to a customer's house because I'm blessed where I get to see pretty much everything we do here. So when you get into somebody's house, and she has a hard time walking 10 feet because she's out of breath and then you bust your butt for a couple of days and now she has a stair lift and you know all kinds of stuff so she can stay home um, her going out to get her hair done after we were done because she could finally get upstairs to her room and stuff that's that's the good stuff that's that's the hope that she had you know that she prayed for that she was wanting and, and it was beautiful because I was part of a great team that was able to give her that hope and and uh, and make her live her best life you know I no longer like the word disability I have met so many people here who by societal standards have a disability and I think that that is a misnomer it is not a disability they are differently not disabled they do things They survive things that I can't even fathom, and there is such a strength and a power in that. Um, there are things that I used to take for granted every day that I don't anymore. The ability to get out of bed, to go to the bathroom, to leave the house. Those are powerful moments. Beyond being my new girlfriend, which my wife is totally okay with because my nephew who has Down syndrome is her boyfriend. Um, she's just a sweet, kind, happy person who even being dealt a bad hand is still happier than most people I've ever met. And that blows my mind up when I see somebody struggle and is still happy. Yeah, every day she would have a a little plastic spider and she would place it somewhere so it would scare me and so we'd play the game of oh goodness you got me with a spider and then yeah, she would giggle and laugh and I'd hand her a spider and next morning it'd be another one somewhere else it was cute she would wait for me to find the spider her diagnosis is complicated um, and she w she was born premature and we went through infant STEM programs and we always were encouraged that she would possibly kind of catch up developmentally, but she never did. And she just kept going backwards. And 38 years ago, 
they had a lot less in diagnostic tools and understanding what a lot of, um, of her issues are today. But along the way, she had medical issues that just seemed to be compound one on top of the other. So we had to put other things in the background. So we, we went through um, kidney failure, two kidney transplants. Um, she's had, so she still has her kidney that she had transplanted the second one since uh, she was five years old. So she's had that for quite a long time. But we're always under their care, the, the transplant team at University Hospital. And she, um, she has uh, congestive heart failure, so we're under the cardiologist care at University Hospital. And she has had, over the years, uh, just a number of things that have um, came into our life that we had to do, lives that we had to deal with. Every day, I have to say that word, life. <laughs> because um, there's, it, it's always throwing a wrench in things. And uh, we, we just deal with each thing as it comes along. Um, when it comes to Bianca, you never know what's going to happen day to day, week to week, month to month. So, I, thinking about what I hope for Bianca, I hope that she will continue to do well in her health. I hope that she will continue to be happy because she's a happy person in spite of whatever goes on. She's, she's always happy and I hope that stays. I hope that stays for her, her happiness, her resilience, her bouncing back. At no matter how sick she gets, at no matter how how many blows are landed on her, I just I hope that she continues down that path of of resilience, of happiness, and laughing because we'll lay on the couch and we'll watch something and, and we're like life partners. We just laugh and laugh and laugh and I hope that she can continue to have that um, that laughter and, and buoyancy and, and resiliency forever. Well, it's really interesting because I think that a lot of people from the outside see what we do and, and of course they're like, well, that must be so rewarding. That must be so such an uplifting thing. And lip, working with the people that, that we work with that have these life challenges, it can be a little heavy at times. You know, it's, it's not like selling donuts, you know. Um, and that, that maybe was a little different than what I thought it would be when we first started this. But... But the beauty of it is you get to see the grace with, pe with which people deal with their challenges, and it, it really brings in perspective. Our clients are a blessing to my heart. Um, some of them have actually developed into friendships that feel like family that I would do anything for. And, um, Yeah, I'm invested. We don't just sell a product, we're doing life together. And that's exquisite. Uh, I started with this company about eight and a half years ago and I got the opportunity to meet the Smiths, Artist Orville and Lester in 2012. And they were the first client that I actually stepped foot into their home and I got to interact with them and learn about their family and learn about their challenges and really connect to them one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And that experience, it was on a Sunday, I think I spent about three hours at their house. And it, that experience just has a forever an imprint in, in my heart and in my mind. And I always feel inspired thinking about them and how they uh, chose to you know, look at the brighter side of things and make the best of, uh, you know, the hand that they were dealt. Uh, Lester is um, an amazing man and um, he really touched my heart. He was the first person that was in a power chair that really showed me what it was like to live in that uh, power chair within his home. When he was 15, it was two weeks before his 16th birthday, he'd gone with our church youth group to Wisconsin, and ironically, they were building a dock so that handicapped children would have access to this lake. The night before they were supposed to come home, the kids all week long had been playing pranks on each other. Well, one of the counselors threw some kids' clothes on top of the cabin roof. Lester volunteered to get it down. He got the clothes down fine. He put his legs over the side of the roof to lower himself down. His shorts caught a nail. He went face forward and landed right there on his 
chimp. And where they were, they were so far back in the woods that the kids had to line the way in, the drive in, with their flashlights so that ambulance could even come in and get it. And they took him to some little town called Wild Rose in Wisconsin. They couldn't do a thing for him, so they had him flight for life to Milwaukee. And uh, when he was in Wild Rose is when they called us, and it was about midnight, and they said, please try to get here as fast as you can because we don't know if he's gonna make it to the night. And we barely uh, got the call, and our pastor was at the door. He had already made plane arrangements for us, and he took us to the airport, and we got there, and uh, Lester was in the halo, but he was alive, you know? And Lester had talked about, you know, he had just gotten his driver's permit when he went to camp, and he was so hepped up that when he got home, he was gonna get wheels. Well, when he came home, he was in wheels, and he never got out of them. In fact, when he died now, we got a letter from the first lady that hired him. And she said she was so glad that she had hired him. He was the first one she'd ever hired with a disability like that. But she said she, he taught her what abilities, disabilities really, you know, people with disabilities really have. And she was honored that she there had to be a reason. You don't know the reason, you never understand it. But then when you find out how he affected other people, you think, yeah, that was the reason. He was here to show people what being different is and it's not bad. He was uh, the, the part of the diversity team at Buckley and uh, at the funeral, some young airman came up to me and he said, Lester made me a better man. 